down in the top 1% in the industry, yes or no? Then why the hell are you acting like it? Dude, if you don't wanna be the best or you don't believe you can be the best, you're out. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless, uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't wanna be one of the nameless. I'm a All right, super important. So does everybody sell? Anybody not sell? Choose our social media. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's easy. Social media is easy to kill right now. Um, I'm going to talk about a lot of different stuff today. Most important thing we're going to talk about is mastery. Does that make sense? A lot of people are in sales, but they're not really good at it. Would everybody agree? What does the top 1% in the automotive industry earn? If you're the best and you're in sales, what's the earning potential that an automotive sales pro can earn top 1%? No, 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 give me an answer though. I want, I want, I want real numbers. What? Okay, we got seven Hunskies. Give me that. We got 600. Okay, what do you got? Five. You got 500? Four. You got four? What do you got? Okay, but you think you could make a million in automotive? No, no, no. I'm at, listen, hand up. Yeah. This is what we can earn. Don't be in the middle, just make a decision. What do you believe? Guys, everybody say belief. Believe. Yeah, automotive. Yeah, transportation space, selling cars, whatever, however we want to call it. A million. A million bucks a year. Totally agree. But if you don't believe, the reason why I'm asking you, okay, we're going to restart for a second, and I want, to, I, want, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to give me your minds today. The greatest thing God gave you was two things, your heart and your mind. And most people don't use their mind. Does that make sense? Because if they did use it, you would have everything that you want in your life. Whatever you want in life, if you really wanted it, you would already have it. Am I right? If you really, really wanted it, you'd have it. That's why you guys are here. You guys are here because all of you have someone who really believes in you, who brought you here, who paid for you to be here, that they want you to get what you want in life and what they want to see you have. It's called good leadership. That's why they spent the money to get you here. Now, if you don't listen today and you don't use your mind when you're here with us, then it doesn't even matter. You want to know one of the biggest reasons why I dust people and why I smoke them? It's because, and how I crush my competition? Because they're never really where they are. It's very simple. We're in a world right now with these phones. See this phone? See this? See this? This is a tool to get you rich. It's a tool to make you a lot of money, but most of us don't make a lot of money with it. We're the tool. Am I right? How many people sit around all day long on their cell phones and just stare at it and watch other people live life instead of building their own? Where are you at when you're doing it? Well, let me give you an example. Some of you, you go home after a long day with your family, they've waited for you to get home, and then you walk in, you're exhausted, you're tired, and you go and get on your phone. How stupid is that? Dude, if I was your family, I'd be like, well, why did I wait all day? Like, that, that's is what I get? Leftovers, then you come in and play on your phone. But yet when you were at, the, at work, what were you doing at work? On your phone. You're never really where you are. You're always distracted. Does that make sense? Okay, are you paying attention? Yes, What's your name? Michael. Michael, listen up. Okay, so I want to tell you guys how to get the life you want. Basically today I'm going to show you your blind spots. Are you ready? Yes. Everybody write this down. Be where your feet are. This is number one. Before I even get into this earning potential. Be where your feet are. You know what that means? If you're at the gym, be present. Be present. That's right. Be at the gym. Okay? You don't, you don't carry your phone with you when you're at the gym. You put your phone down and, you, and you, you focus on yourself. When you're at work, what do you do? There's 60 minutes in an hour. How you work 60 minutes in that hour, that's what you do. Some of you right now, you're not going to get turned on by this language in which I'm talking to you. Everybody, everybody write this down. Winning. Does anybody in here want to win? Yes or no? Okay, what if winning doesn't recognize you? What if you turn winning off? You know the fastest way to turn it off? You're here with me right now, you're training. I'm going to send you guys back out these doors by 2 o'clock, complete different people. Not if you don't pay attention. I can't own your mind. Only you can. You're in charge of you. I'm not in charge of you. You're in charge of you. I can get you a gym pass, but I can't make you work out. I can't work out for you. I know stuff in my head. My last year selling cars, I made 716 grand in a shitty ass economy. Are trades up right now? Are they still worth more money than they've ever been worth, yes or no? 
Well, I'm asking questions. Are they worth more than they usually used to be worth? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Who's been in the business longer than 10 years? Okay, 10 years ago, when a guy drove a car off the lot, it was immediately worth half of what he bought it for. Am I right? Yes. Is the market that way today? I made 716 grand in that market, okay? You guys are spoiled. You guys have it easy. You guys right now, 10 months ago, everybody paid 10, 15, 20 grand over retail for everything they bought. Am I right, yes or no? Yes. Did you guys get paid a lot of money during that time? Yes. Can I ask you a question? When you got paid more money, did you get better or was the market better? So that money you made wasn't because of you, was it? And now that market's gone, isn't it? And that market, the trades are still up a little bit, but there's some beautiful things that you gotta realize. Number one, everybody right now, there's never been a better time in the history of the world for a consumer to make a deal on a car. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Okay, 10 months ago, they would have to spend 10 or 15 grand more for the same car. That's the rule. But we said because you're getting an additional 20 or 30 cent more from your trade, it really washes all out in the end. Sign here. Debbie's gonna be here in about an hour if you don't sign on the dotted line. People bought air because there wasn't cars and paid 15 grand over for air. You never are going to see those selling times again. Those selling times made weak people. Weak people. A lot of you right now, if you got in in the last two years, you don't know the art of selling. You don't know the art of mastering a stranger. You don't know the art of caring more about somebody than they care about themselves. You don't know the art of believing in yourself. Dude, it was lay down city. I love this. Everybody's asleep right now. Your competition, you guys can sell a thousand cars a month. Easily. Everybody in this room can be selling 50 cars a month. You got to listen to what I'm telling you though. I averaged 70 to 80 cars a month in a shitty ass economy. I made that kind of money and I didn't even have a very good coach. But I understand some simple things. If I would have been, if I would have coached me in this economy now and I was back then, I'd have made two million a year. Everybody listen to me. I'm gonna show you how to influence, persuade, paint pictures, tell stories. I'm gonna teach you to believe in yourself. But rule number one, there's lots of rule number ones. I've got 90 laws. Everybody write down, these are the laws. The laws of winning. Okay, ready? Number one, be where your feet are. Since I've already started there, that's gonna be the first thing. That means when you're at work, be at work. When you're at home, be at home. I know the reason why salespeople have shitty lives. You know why? Because they don't take care of their home life and personal problems kill your business. Do you understand? I grew up with a lot of bad leaders. They had a lot of bad relationships, a lot of bad lives, did a lot of bad stuff. Don't be like them. You guys need to understand this right now. You guys have a great culture. I know y'all's team, I know your company, but honestly, I think you guys are a little comfortable. I think you guys are selling a couple hundred cars a month and I don't think you guys are really even working that hard. I'm not telling you you're not going to work. I'm not telling you you're better than most, but you're not as good as you could be. And if I'm not as good as I could be, I have a problem with that. Are you, could you be better? Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. Rule number one, law number one, when we're at work, we're gonna be at work. Okay, if you're gonna work 10 hours, work 10 hours. If you're gonna work three, work three. There's 60 minutes in an hour, how you work 60 minutes in that hour determines who you are as a person. Okay, if you wanna be successful, prove it. Pay attention right now. Okay, and then when you go home, everybody say phone. Put it down. Put it down. Get rid of it. Listen. Once you put that shit down and you go home into your family and you show them how much you appreciate them, they will support you to go back to work the next day and give it all you got. But you go home and you bitch and you complain and you whine about your job or you bring home negative crap, they're not going to support you. They won't let you work these long hours. They won't let, let, let you stay late when you got a customer coming back in and you will have personal problems. Do you understand? For anybody, everybody's made to do communion with somebody in life, a husband, a wife, a partner, somebody, right? That person at home, you should bring home special energy to them and not leftovers. You have to do this in sales. And by the way, listen to me, are there going to be problems when you're in the ring? Everybody get this, when you're fighting the fight and you're in the arena, you're in the ring, are you gonna get punched in the mouth, yes or no? Yes. Okay, so either get out of the ring or stay in it and shut up and quit complaining. If you're in the ring, and you got ring, we're gonna call home, we're gonna call work, work. 
and then you got home, you don't go home and talk about stuff that happened at the ring, only the good stuff. Does that make sense? My wife and kids been fired up to see me all day long. I go home, I just lost two deals. Customer was supposed to come back. The guy delivered me back the car across the street. I don't walk in and say, God, babe, this is bull crap. My manager didn't put enough money in the trade. Got this guy supposed to come back. I waited for two hours and never showed. She's gonna be like, damn, your job must suck. I don't want you to keep working there. You think she's gonna support you? You think she's gonna be your energy for you to give more work, yes or no? Whose fault is it? Yours, you screwed up your own life. Everybody write this down. Law number two, don't self-sabotage your own life. Self-sabotage is what I see happening in the world right now. Now listen to me, when I tell you this today and you write it on that piece of paper, Dude, you have to own this. You have to make this a part of your life. You need to remember me when you go back to work that says, no ways, dude, I'm not gonna be a victim. I'm not gonna complain, I'm not gonna whine. Perspective, okay? Guess what, you guys got a job, you're in the ring, you knew you were gonna have problems, you're gonna get hit in the mouth, cool. Okay, that's what we do. That's why we get paid all the money. That's why we got a level 10 earning opportunity. You want a level one earning opportunity where you can't make any money and there's problem free? Go to Walmart. We'll put an orange vest on you, you'll have no problems, you'll go home, you'll have nothing to talk about. Your lifestyle will suck. You guys got a level 10 earning opportunity, you gotta take the heat, okay? By the way, it's beautiful, isn't it? To get paid all the money and do the hard stuff, okay, that, that losers can't do. You guys are winners, remember we talk about winning. So when you go home, tell your wife, your family, your people that you're with, the good stuff. Hey babe, today there was this family today, they went to two showroom floors, they couldn't get approved. Babe, you should have seen it. We got them approved. My manager stepped up, put more money in their trade. I don't know how, but it triggered a better interest rate. Their payment was lower than they thought. Dang, babe, this is the good stuff, man. You know, I thought when I got into sales, I was gonna be selling people, but all I do is help people. It's so all I do is help people all day long. Life's good. She's like, damn, man. I want you to go back again tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow, eight o'clock, dinner's ready. I'm supposed to be home. I'm like, babe, I just had a, a, an up pull up. Okay, she's like, stay, stay, take care of them, you're good. But if you go home and you run your mouth and you complain, you whine, you know what they're gonna say? Why are you staying? That place sucks anyways. All they do is drain you. You gonna come home in another bad mood? You guys feel me? Hey, by the way, I am you, I am you, you are me. I did everything that you guys are doing. I know exactly what you're going through. You can't tell me anything that I don't know. So I'm telling you how to be the best, the top 1%, which we're gonna get an earning potential. All right, number two, if you treat, ready, or three, really, okay? Because that was don't self-sabotage your own life. Three, okay, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Everybody, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Okay, you know what that means? If you got kids, when you took them home from the hospital, you said, hey man, I'm gonna take you guys home, I'm gonna brush your teeth, I'm gonna pray with you every night, I'm gonna tuck you in, Three years later, you're not doing any of that. Go back to day one. Remember when you got your job in sales? Remember how much they told us we could earn? By the way, if anybody's hearing me right now, level 10 earning opportunity in the car business right now, top 1%, which I can make you that way in this room today. I can make you the best in the world today as long as you can believe you can be the best. Dude, if you don't want to be the best or you don't believe you can be the best, you're out. Can I control as a teacher or a trainer how he thinks and how he believes? No. no. Well, listen to me, because he may sit here and say, well, things like this don't happen for people like me. You're out. You're out. You guys, everybody write this down, ready? Number four, remember I said if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Hey, is this job badass, yes or no? Yes. Yep. Go back to day one. You know, what I, you know what I said, this guy calls me the other day and he goes, he's an owner. He goes, I can't get my managers to you know, be fired up. I said, fire one of them. Let him, no, 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 like seriously, like go fire one of them and, and let him go do an interview at another job. And literally he's gonna say, they're gonna say, well, what are you good at? He's gonna say, well, I'm really good at firing up the team and I'm good at doing sales meetings and I'm, I'm good at getting involved in deals. And, and he's gonna say, all oh, this shit he should have done. Now he's gonna go start over. You guys, listen to me. If you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. You must stay in prove me state at all times. You guys get it? Hey, who in here is married? Raise your hand. Dude, when she married you, is her life continually getting better? Or did she settle at some point because you're like, well, we're married now. Don't ever do that. Makes me sick. 
By the way, listen to me. I'm telling you how I believe. Okay? Does anybody like how I believe? Yeah. This is called winning. If winning doesn't recognize you, it will leave you. But, guy, guy, can I ask you a question? If you don't take care of your customers, will somebody else take care of them? Yes, absolutely. If you don't take care of your kids, will someone else be their hero? Yeah, yeah the answer is yeah. They'll choose someone else because you weren't around. And if you don't take care of your wife or your husband or your partner, someone else will. You don't own anybody. It's rented daily. This entitlement in this world makes me sick. You guys need, write down number five, drive. Drive is this, what drives you? You know what drives me? Madness. I wanna prove everybody wrong. Now I don't know where you came from, but I had somebody who hired me when I was 18. You know where it was? In the car business. Can you believe a guy like me that was a loser could go get a job at a car lot? I can, because they'll hire anybody. If you're breathing, they'll say, this is how a manager will hire you. I'm not saying this is in your store, but this is in life. Hey, you want to work hard? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can show up to work on time? Absolutely. You're going to do what I say? Absolutely. You're going to move cars? Absolutely. All right. You're hired. He just said he's going to do it all. I said, you just told him he was going to do it. He didn't interview. Dude, interview in the car business has been a joke our whole life. Now, I'm not being negative. I'm just being real. You guys want to go slaughter your competition, yes or no? Yes. You want to sell 1,000 cars a month? This is how you do it. This is how they hire their sales teams that you're competing against. You see how easy it is to dust them now? Now, but follow me. I get a job at a car lot. First day, I got a lay down. I know you guys know what that is. $1,700. I never had more than $20 in my hand. The minute my manager told me, you just made $1,700, I had something shoot up through my arm. Bam! It was like, holy crap. And guess what I said? This is my way out. This this, this job, this is my life now. These guys, this is their job, this is my life. Something hit me and it was called drive. And I'm here to tell you what you just wrote down. If you don't know what drives you, you're not going to make it. What's the fire in your belly? What pisses you off? What stirs you up? When you want to quit, what keeps you from quitting? When things are hard, instead of you slowing down and buying into it's hard, what makes you push through? Mine? Madness. I want to prove everybody wrong. Everybody doubted me. Everybody thought I wasn't going to make it. I want to prove them all wrong. I'm still proving them wrong. We got a nine figure business right now. I still work like I'm broke. I keep a chip on my shoulder every freaking day. Some of you, you're comfortable, you're cozy. I'm going to ask a question. Are you earning the top 1% in the industry? Yes or no? Then why the hell are you acting like it? By the way, people that are successful, they never think they're doing enough. People that are freaking broke, they think they're doing too much. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? Yeah. What did I say? People who are broke think they're, people who are sexual think they're not doing enough. People who are broke think they're doing too much. Okay, do you believe that? All right, are you earning this type of money? Can you? What's holding you back? Mindset, skill set, habits. You change your habits, you change your ritual. You change your mindset, you change the way you believe. You get your drive right. You understand what pushes you. Okay, also purpose, man. Guys, like, why are you alive? You wanna do big stuff in your life? You wanna change a lot of other people's lives, yes or no? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna explain sales to you, to you in the most simplest version ever. You ready? 30 seconds of how sales works, all right? So here's what we got. 10% of the people, they were gonna buy anyways when they came in. They, they, listen, you could have been a robot, they would have bought from you. 10% of them, they're not gonna buy nothing. I don't give a shit what you say, give the car away for free, they're not gonna buy nothing. Does that make sense? 80% yep. of them, they need help making a decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, whose job is it to help them with that decision? Okay, your, your couple things here. Number one, everybody, everybody listen to me. We're gonna train on this. The, the two fastest ways to sell any customer and ensure that you'll close every single customer and be like Alcatraz, no one escapes. Rule number one, care about the client more than they care about themselves. What does that mean? Whoever cares the most wins. If I care about you more than you, you're gonna do what I want you to do. That's the game. So when they come in, I love people. I care about them. Hey, this isn't a show. This is what we do. This is my life. Is this your profession? Yes or no? Yes. Do you wanna master this? Did Kobe Bryant master basketball? Yes. 
Yeah. Did he did he suck in the beginning? Yeah, yeah, damn right he sucked. But guess what? He didn't suck for long, did he? Remember Michael Jordan when he started coming up? He wrote the top 50 guys that were picked ahead of him, and he picked them off one at a time. What do you think he worked from? A state of madness? A state of competitiveness? A state of wanting to be the best? Yeah, you bet your ass he did. Do you think he wanted to break records? Yes, even when he didn't, he knew one day he was. So there's two things there. Rule number one, when I'm dealing with somebody, I'm going to care about them more than they care about themselves, period. And you will too if you want to be the best. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Number two, this is super cool. Remember, you care about, care about people more than they ever imagined they can even care about themselves. They'll do whatever you want them to do. Rule number two, you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. Dude, when you're talking to somebody, if you don't believe in yourself, I'm not gonna believe in you. I have people that walk up to me all the time. They got their script, they got their pitch, they know their job, <laughs> they suck. <laughs> You know why they suck? Because they don't believe in themselves. When they're telling me something, when they're saying we should go here, do this or do that, they don't believe. So since they don't believe, I don't believe. There's a thing called transfer of emotion. It's called persuasion. It's to take the way that you feel and the way that you see things and push it into your client and now they feel that way. Does that make sense? Okay, anybody that's really ready to sell today and be the best, there's a thing called a state. And if you don't put the people in the state that you want them in to be, to be able to make buying decisions, they're not going to buy anything. When I meet you, whatever state you're in doesn't matter because I know what state I'm going to end up putting you in. Does that make sense? Yes. Who's in charge of putting the client in the state they want them to be? Who's, whose job? Us. That's right, us. But some of you in here, listen to me. If you're shy, if you're introverted, if you're extroverted, if you don't believe in yourself, if everybody thought you were a loser in life, if you've had it all but then you lost it, if you, sales is a way that you can literally build whatever life you want. It's the coolest thing, guys. I wanna tell you why you should become obsessed with sales. Number one, because if you become good at it, you can have whatever you want. And I mean like everybody else could give up on you, I'll start over today, I'm good. I'll go sell this right now and I can make a commission like that. By the way, I don't run around with commission breath. I don't beg people to buy stuff. I am the product, I believe in my product. I'm somebody that no one else has seen. I'm a, I'm a professional, I'm not an amateur. I have passion, I have belief, I have drive, I have desire, I'm alive, I'm awake. Okay, a lot of people aren't this way. A lot of people are like dead Bob, they're asleep, man. You ever seen loose eyes? See, eyes, the eyes are the window to the soul, am I right? Can you see in everybody's eyes in this room, yes or no? You can see in their eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell the ones that are more hungry than others? Yes. Okay. I asked her a simple question. Looking around the room, looking into everybody's eyes, can you tell who's more hungry? Who's hungrier? Who wants it more? Who's paying more attention? And then loose eyes. Loose eyes, like I'm all over the place. I'm just, I'm dancing around. That's how I sell, see salespeople sell now. They got loose eyes. Rule number one in making a decision with anybody, if I reach out and shake your hand, eye contact. Eye contact is everything. Today when we're training, your eye contact you have with me will let me know how you view yourself, how you view life. See, I can see how your perspective of life is through just looking into your eyes. By the way, can you change the way that your eyes look like that? Yes. Yeah, just start caring more care more about you. All right, so I want you to write this down. You'll never out earn your own self-worth. Now we're going to talk about earning potential. If you don't believe you're worth it, you can't make it. This is the first thing we have to fix. Who decides what you're worth? Can I decide what you're worth? No. Let me ask you, what if I walk up to you and I go, dude, you suck, man. Your legs are skinny. You're not going to make it. You got a tattoo. You're not professional, dude. You're not going to do well. Does that matter? Dude, when you hear that, that's life. Do you understand? Everybody told me I was an idiot. By the way, I'm going to ask you a question. When you go to go to bigger levels, will you look like an idiot? Yes or no? Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to show you how easy it is to sell. You, you, you want to make a million a year? Yeah. You want to make a million un under the next 365 days? Yeah. 
I'm going to show you. Today we're going to study on a lot of different things. Number one, I'm putting down this word, selling something. Now I'm going to tell you this. These are the three things that will make you rich. Selling, number one, you're selling something. Number two, you're looking for something to sell. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get rich. Number three, training to get better. I'm going to tell you why these three things will make you rich. I want everybody paying attention right now. Listen, right here. Number one, when you interact with a customer and I go to shake your hand, can you guys close 10 for 10, Alcatraz, no one escapes? Can you close 10 people if 10 of them come and shake your hand? Yes. Yes. Every one of you in this room right now, write down delusional belief. Listen to me. See this? We're going to skill stack today. Today, what we're going to learn is that we are going to have a delusional belief. That means everybody can buy, came to buy, will buy as long as you do your job. You ready? Right here on the road to the cell. Everybody write down. Ready? Step one. You ready? Delusional belief. This should be the road to your cell. If somebody says it's meet and greet, they're a liar. You can't walk up and shake somebody's hand unless you've already made the decision what's going to happen when that hand gets shaken. Dude, if you walk across the showroom floor and you're in a service department and you look at me, you're buying something. That's the way this goes. Like, that's how this game plays. You guys get it? Do you guys call your own shots? Yes or no? You know what I love? You know what I love about sales and closing? By the way, everybody says, I'm a closer. Let me explain how this works. So here's sales. Sales is everything that happens before the presentation. Does that make sense? Some of you guys need to understand this. Anybody that says they're a closer, closers come out the first 90% of the time. What are you doing? Outside showing the vehicle, making the customer fall in love with you, building rapport, a lot of it. Building trust, a lot of it. People say, well, I built rapport. Not enough, dumbass. Well, well I built trust. Not enough. If you'd have built enough, they'd have done it. There wasn't enough. You got to do more. Amateurs say, I built trust. I built rapport. Pros say, I got to build enough trust. I got to build enough rapport. I got to make them like me a lot. I got to do this stuff. When do we do it? Right here. First 90% of the time, we're outside on the lot, making them fall in love with it. Does money exchange hands on the lot? No. no. So you do all this stuff really, really, really good. The best anyone's ever seen in their life. So, the last 10% of the time, you can go inside and collect 100% of the money right there. Does that make sense? Yep. Nobody teaches that no more. Dude, delusional belief, number one. Number two, great attitude. Rose to the cell ought to be delusional belief, great attitude, and then three, y'all go shake their hand. But dude, if you don't, haven't made your mind up that you're going to have the best attitude in the world, if you come and shake my hand and you don't have the best attitude I've ever seen in my life, number one, I'm already judging you when you're walking up to me. You know what I've learned? And today we're going back to the basics. Should you know how to shake somebody's hand? How many people don't? I'll bet today I'll grab someone who's been selling for five years. I'll say, come shake my hand. Guys, repetition's the mother of skill. That's number three here. You want to make a million dollars in the next 365 days. I do not care your pay plan, your structure. I don't care about any of it. Save all that crap. You can make it. You got to be able to do three things. Number one, you got to be able to sell someone when they're in front of you face to face. You have to be able to sell them. Selling is this. Closing is that. Today, we're going to work on the first 90% and then on the work, we're also going to work on the last 10%. Is that cool? I will show you how to close today and be very good at it, and do it ethically. Dude, I can bump somebody a thousand bucks a month. It ain't no big deal, I'll do it ethically. I'll show you guys how to do it. It's called money justification, it's very easy. By the way, some of you in here, you don't have a lot of money. It's just the truth, and it's totally cool. But you need to learn how to talk about money. You need to explain money. You need to look like, everybody say image. image. Should you have an image that looks like you understand money? Yeah. Dude, if you walked into a ba bank to go invest a million dollars and the person you walked in to invest your money with didn't look worthy of investing your money, you'd probably turn around and walk out. Am I right? What if they were the smartest person in the world? Doesn't matter. You didn't even get a chance to get there. Everybody needs three coaches, I believe. Okay, I talk about fitness a lot. A lot of people don't like it. They're like, oh, I can't believe that. Dude, guys, like when people see you, they're judging you. 
Do you think people want to look at you and be like, oh, this person's disciplined. They take care of themselves. They could probably take care of me. Absolutely. Yeah, like, like a 500 pound nurse can't come tell you to get in good shape. Or, hey, you better eat clean. You're like, what? Like, like, not fat shaming anybody. I'm trying to tell you, image is super important. Image. Number two, speaking. You guys speak for a living. You're a professional public speaker. You are. Whether he speaks to 10,000 people or one, he speaks for a living. The way he talks, his tonality, his language, his belief, his passion, his word tracks, his word play, it all matters. Okay? Also, his sales skill. You got to have speaking, image, and sales skill. All three of those. Okay? Now listen to me. This one right here says selling something. Alcatraz, no one escapes. Number two, looking for something to sell. Okay? You know what this is called? Making the dials. You got to call. You got you to send text messages. You got to send videos. You got to make calls. Listen, I had a non-negotiable when I sold. This is something that doesn't exist anymore. It still exists for me and it probably exists for a couple of you. Okay? The most highest elite earners and pros have what are called non-negotiables. You know what non-negotiable means? It's not going to negotiate. Do you guys negotiate your, your values? Like if I don't steal, but someone goes, man, but there's but some, a billion dollars. I don't steal. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to go steal because that's not what I do. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah but she's so hot, man. You're ne but you don't cheat. Doesn't matter. How bad do you want to be successful? Listen, some of you in here, you don't have your drive high enough. Has anybody ever thought you, you weren't going to make it? Have you ever thought you weren't going to make it? I'm here to tell you this universe will give you whatever the hell you want. It's not about who you are. It's about who you're becoming that matters. Who you're becoming, who you become, who you're becoming right now in this room as you're listening to me. The, you guys are in here, when you leave today, you should walk back out a completely different person than when you walked in. The phone, making the dials, this is something that salespeople don't do anymore. It's a foreign language, it's like speaking Chinese. So I'm gonna tell you a non-negotiable. When I sold, it, and I was young, it was 100 dials a day or one car sold. What does that mean? I don't leave work unless I made 100 dials or I sold one. Then I moved to 200 dials a day or two cars sold. You guys get it? And then it was 300 dials a day. You say, well, who are you going to call? <laughs> How big's your database? We got more people to call than we know what to do with. Am I right? We got more people to call than we know what to do with. By the way, you know who picks up the phone? One, every, one out of every 20. Does that make sense? So if you want to talk to five people, you got to call 100 people. That's the way it works. You may get lucky here and there, but that's the numbers. Okay? By the way, is this y'all's business? Are you guys employees or are you guys business owners? Business owners. That's right. Those are your cars. That's your store. That's your building. That's your lot. This is your place. Okay? Guys, this is your business. I can't believe. How much did it cost you to start this business? You're telling me you can make a million a year, it's your business, and it didn't cost you nothing? Can I ask you a question? Does time and experience mean anything in sales? Or can you get up to speed like that if you train and learn? Just like that. I'm going to tell you a secret. What I, I honestly think if I had a veteran here for 10 years, no disrespect, I've been selling for 25 years. But I'm ate up. You guys know I'm like a freak in nature when it comes to training. So should you be. And I'm going to tell you why on number three here in a minute. But if I take a guy who's been selling 10 years here and I take a guy that's brand new, remember I told you if you treat something like it's a beginning, there'll never be an end, right? Who's married? Remember when you first met your girl? You would do anything to get her to go to dinner with you, man, to hang out, to have a good time. You were trying, man. You wanted it so bad. Then you got married, man. You don't go to dinner with her that same way anymore. I sure do, actually. No, no, but most people don't, am I right? Yeah. That's the deal. These people the other day, they go, hey, we're going to marriage counseling. Why? I can fix your problem right now. Just treat each other like you did when you first met. You, you'll be good. That's why I love new salespeople. New salespeople have a new mind. They ain't seen anything. 
They didn't get tainted by these guys. They didn't get brainwashed by that. I can tell them, listen to me. All you got to do is believe in yourself. You'll never out earn your own self-worth. Have a great attitude. Can you have a good attitude? You see these people that pull in? They could be anywhere in the world, but they're with us right now. They could have pulled into any store, but they came here. There's a reason, man. They wouldn't be here if they didn't want to buy. People don't go through the McDonald's drive through without going through the other side with some food. This is on you, dude. Like, they're here. They want to buy. They can buy. They came to buy. They will buy as long as you do your job. Okay, when you don't have a customer in front of you, most salespeople sit on their ass like a fisherman waiting for something to bite. You guys got to become lions and hunt. Okay, does anybody know what a cold call is? Yep. Okay, what is a cold call? You're just calling. A cold call is when you call someone who don't know who you are. Am I right? Can I ask you a question? If somebody bought a car in 2019 right now, do you think they have equity, yes or no? Somebody bought a car in 2020. Do you think they have equity? Yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. 2020, it didn't even get hot till about May. Yeah. Okay, it didn't even get hot till about May. And then I think we didn't even hit, start hitting big addendums till the beginning of 2021 because we started realizing what we could do. But, but hold on. But these two years, these two years are what I call free game. Does that make sense? Yeah. These two years. Okay. Now, no matter what they paid, they've had two years to pay down also, right? All right, now watch this. Think about this for a minute. Is that a cold call if you were to call one of these customers? No, no that's not a cold call because they do know who, are, who we are. Do they trust us? Yeah. Yes, because they already spent money with us once, right? Who in here can get up here in front of me and, and perform a live phone call to call one of these customers? Come on, let me grab you. Come on, man. Hey, listen to me. What did I tell you? Three things to get rich. By the way, does it cost you any money to mess up in this room? Three things to get rich. You ready? Got to be able to sell someone face to face. Alcatraz. No one escapes. I'm going to talk to you guys about them. Number two, you got to be able to make the dials. Can I, can I tell you the trick? Okay. I can 5X his money right now. All I have to do is teach him how to use the phone. I know he knows how to take an inbound call, or he should, but most people don't know how to make an outbound call. Does that make sense? Guys, you can make 100 outbound calls to one inbound call coming in. When we don't have a customer, what should, what should, what should we be doing? Making the dials. Calling. But you know why people don't call? You know, you know the number one reason why they don't call? Why? They don't know what to say. They don't know, it's, guys, do you want to know the truth? They don't know what to say. Nobody's ever taught you what to say, do they? Did they ever teach you not what on, to say? Not on a cold call, no. Okay, but this isn't a cold call. You're gonna call people that bought from your company in 2019 or 2020, right? What do you sell at Cadillacs? We're just gonna say they bought a, a used Toyota Corolla, right? Okay, they bought a 2019 Toyota Corolla. It's a one-year-old program car. And guess what? If they bought that car, you're gonna call them. What do you say? If I could teach you guys what to say and I could guarantee and ensure that you could set an appointment on every call, how much money could you guys make? Dude, you guys want to get rich? You want to? You're going to have to get skilled. You don't get rich if you don't get skilled. Now listen to me. Will people do what you want them to do as long as you're good enough to do it? Okay, we're going to role play me and you together, okay? All right, now listen. Here's how we're going to play this scenario. I'm going to try a couple of you guys, okay? Remember this, do listen. Fight, flight, or freeze, okay? Don't ever walk away from the chance to get better. Pressure makes you better. Everybody say positive peer pressure. Positive peer pressure. This is negative peer pressure. I'm negatively, hey, can, hey, do these drugs. Do these drugs, that's negative peer pressure. Positive is this, you got a family? You already said you had a wife? I do. Okay, she deserves a better lifestyle. You know she does, you yes. wanna take her there. I'm gonna make sure that you learn the skill today so you can make a million a year. And I know you guys can do it. Does that make sense? Now he's like, hell yeah, man, I want my baby girl to see bigger checks. Okay, that's what I'm after. Everybody, by the way, remember what I told you what drives me? What drives me? Fear of embarrassment. I became obsessed with training when I got called to the front of the room like this and I was 19 years old and somebody told me, they said, hey Andy, go show us how to convert a customer out of service. You know what? I didn't know how to do it. You know why I didn't know how to do it? Because no one ever taught me to do it. So I sucked at it. So I got embarrassed, but when I left, I said that'll be the last time I get embarrassed. So you know what I did? It's called blind spots. You wanna know how to get rich? 
You find your blind spots. I'm gonna find your blind spots, right? By the way, you have a blind spot, which is like, you're not good at calls. You've already admitted you're not good, right? Well, show, always, yeah. well, no, no, but you're, you're not as good as you want to be, right? Not at all, yeah. And by the way, some of you, you're good at closing. You make two, three hundred grand a year, but you're pretty good. Dude, if he can't do this call in front of me, he's not good at all. So if I can make him good, what will happen? Bam! That bucket of money fills up. Does that make sense? Okay, this is why we train. So here's what we're going to do. My name's Andy. You're going to call me. So it goes ring, ring. He's going to call me, and then I want to know what he's going to say on this 2019 Toyota Corolla. Is that cool? I bought it back in 2019. Exactly. Ready, ring, ring, this is Andy. Hey Andy, how's it going? This is Devin over at Paradise Chevrolet Cadillac. Devin, what's up buddy? Not much, man. I thought I'd give you a call here. Uh, I see you bought a Toyota Corolla from us not too long ago. You still have that? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Have you ever, have you ever thought that the possibility of possibly getting more money than what your car is worth is something you'd be interested in? I love my car, I'm good buddy. I appreciate you reaching out. That's, that's great, so does my manager. That's why I'm calling you today is because he wants your car. That was the best time to get out of that and into something new. I'm cool. I love my car. I'm really happy. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic car. That's why you want to capitalize on this market. Okay, now listen to me. You're on the phone. You're calling them, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Do you want them to say yes? I do. Did I say yes to anything? No. Okay, you want me to teach you? By the way, listen to me. If you want to get somebody to buy something, what do you got to do? You gotta ask them questions, the answer is yes to. Okay, you ready? You're gonna be my customer. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, that's, yeah. Very simple. Okay, <laughs> ring, ring, answer. Hey man, how's it going? Hey, what's going on buddy? Hey, hey, this is Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. Look, I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Sure. Cool, number one, do you still have the 2019 Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2019? You still got it? My man. Listen, my general manager, his name's Eddie. He wanted me to personally reach out and ask you one question if you still have the car. If Eddie was willing to offer you more money, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Can I tell you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. No, I'm thinking about it. But... Hold on, but he can't say no, can he? Why can't he say no? Yes, All right, you ready? Do you want to know why? Because I'm really good at what I do. I'm trained. Hey, what's going on? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. Number one, I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Uh, sure, man. What's going on? Cool. Hey, number one, do you still have the 2019 Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2020? You still have it? Yeah. Beautiful. Well, the reason why I'm calling is because my general manager, her name is Sarah, she's amazing. She wanted me to personally reach out personally and ask you one question if you still have the vehicle. If we were willing to offer you more money, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Could I tell you? Oh sure, you could tell me. Bam! That's it. I didn't say would you trade it in? Would you upgrade it? Would you drive it down? I said could I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Oh yeah, well you could tell me. Okay, cool, yes ma'am. So hypothetically, I say no, I'm good, I love my car. You ready? Yes. Okay, cool, but even if you loved it, you still let me tell you because you love your car. Everybody wants to know what it's worth. But let's role play together, you ready? Okay, okay, uh, here, stand up here. Let's get her up here. Hold on, you're staying here with me. Hold on, hold on, because, because, because I like this. Even though she would say yes to me, we're gonna let her say no, okay? Um, ready? Ring, ring. Oh, you guys say hello? Sorry, sorry. Hi. <laughs> okay, hi. Hey, what's going on? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. Look, I was reviewing your account. I need about 30 seconds of your time. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? Sure, that's fine. Okay, awesome. Um, I noticed you bought a 2019 Toyota Corolla back here in 2019. Do you still have it? I do. Okay, beautiful. Well, the reason why I wanted to reach out is Eddie's my general manager. is a super nice guy. He wanted me to reach out and ask you one question, only one question if you still had it. If we were willing to offer you more money, more money than what your 2019 Toyota Corolla was ever worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? C could I tell you how much it was? I'm, I'm good, I'm retired. I'm actually, this is gonna be the last car I purchased. To totally understand. Listen, if your house is worth $100,000 and someone is gonna give you 500 grand for it, you'd probably give them two minutes of your time, right? Just two minutes? 
I mean, if it was five times more. Sentimental value. Like, I can't imagine parting ways from it. To totally understand. All we want to do is make you a crazy offer. Have you ever won the lottery? No. Yeah, you just have. All I want to do, I don't know if you got a magic rabbit foot in your pocket, but I just want to give you a crazy number, and in the end, it's completely your decision. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I just want to blow your mind, and in the end, it's up to you. Whether you do nothing and roll off into the sunset, I just want to tell you, we appreciate you. We're grateful for you. We want to blow your mind. Would it be okay if I gave you that offer? Sure. Okay, let me tell you how this works, okay? Uh, my general manager has already wrote over $200,000, over $200,000 in this last week, overpaying for people's cars. He's getting so crazy, we're about to put him in a straight jacket. All I need you to do is come down to the dealership. It's going to take about two minutes. I'm going to give you a crazy offer and blow your mind. And in the end, it's completely your decision. Do whatever you want. Does that sound fair? Can you make it in right now or would after work be best? That's it. By the way, watch, watch. You ready? She says, I'm not interested. You know what I say? Have a blessed day. Thank you so much for your time. You're a valued customer. If you need anything, let us know. Make the next call. Would you do three passes or do you have a cardinal rule? No, I mean, cause I'm actually just calling to, to see if something's there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, there's a, there's a there, and by the way, I wanna give you an example. Do I know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did I just make this up? You guys think I'm winging this in any way, shape or form? Yeah. Uh, no. What, what, you know how I practice it? Number one. I, did, I, I wrote down word tracks and then I made calls. I got hung up on. I did exactly what you did. I said, well, what, um, well, what do you think about that? Bam, they hang up. I'm like, well, how in the hell am I going to get them to believe in me if I'm not framing? Everybody say framing. framing. Framing my questions, framing my script to move people forward and advance them closer to where I want them to go. So, I want to give you my framing, ready? Hey, what's going on? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors, where you bought your last car from. That's the first thing I say out the gate, where you bought your last car from, because I'm creating familiarity, right? Like, I'm not a stranger, I'm not cold calling you, I'm not from AT&T, right? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors, where you bought your last car from. I say this, I was reviewing your account. Hey. <laughs> when somebody goes, I got your account pulled up, you're like, Shit, man, what account? <laughs> I'm creating interest. So I said, it's Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. I was reviewing your account, okay? I say, it's extremely important. Yep. I say that, it's extremely important. And then everybody say, rephrase. rephrase. People won't always remember what you said, but they'll always remember the way you made them feel. People won't always remember what you said during a negotiation, but they'll always remember the last sentence that came out of your mouth. So I do quick pops, the rephrases. So I say, I say, hey, uh, can I get 30 seconds? Can I get 30 seconds? Because that's the last thing they hear. Hey, what's going on? It's Andy down here at ABC Motors where you bought your last car from. I was reviewing your account. It's extremely important. Can I get 30 seconds? All I need is about 30 seconds. They say, oh yeah, you get 30 seconds. See, what did I do? Now I've got them to give me permission. Everybody say, earn the right. Earn the right. You wanna ask for somebody's business? You gotta earn the right to ask for it. Some of you know about that, some of you don't. I need to earn the right to get more time. So then I say, awesome. The 2019 uh, Toyota Corolla you bought from us back in 2019, whatever car on the sheet that says they bought, Acura, Honda, Toyota, Cadillac, I don't care. Hey, that Cadillac you bought from us in 2019, um, do you still have it? You ask them a simple question. Do you still have it? If they say no, say, hey, no problem. What do you got? Just pivot the other way because it doesn't matter. It all goes down the same deal. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, so what do you have now? Oh, okay, well, listen, man, that's amazing. Well, my general manager, my one of the, you just roll into it again. But if she says, yeah, I still got it, then I say, awesome. Everybody say, pay, pay, tell a story. Everybody say, tell a story. Can I, you, you guys want to get rich? Yeah. You want to get rich? You want to get rich? Yes. Stop selling, start telling stories. Tell, tell a story. What do, you, what do you want? What do I want you to do? Can I explain it in such a way that my words flow like water? Does that make sense? Guys, it's called being a pro, right? I, I'm telling a story. You know, my, what's your name? Dave. Watch. My general manager, hey, well, the reason why I'm reaching out is that my general manager, Dave, he wanted me to personally reach out to you. Notice I'll dive personally. He wanted me to personally reach out to you and ask you one question if you still had the vehicle. If Dave was willing to offer you more money, and then I say it twice, more money than what your car was worth, would you mind if I told you how much that was? And I say, could I tell you? Notice, I don't say, would you mind if I told you how much that was and get quiet? I say, would you mind if I told you how much that was? Can I tell you? 
I pop them again. Why? Because I say, oh uh, yeah, just tell me. Does that make sense? Yeah. I force the yes. Oh yeah, 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 tell me. Okay, beautiful. Now what do I say? Let me tell you how this works. I'll write this out for you word for word. I'll say this a million times, I won't miss one word. I say, cool, let me tell you how this works. I always say, you don't have to say what I say, but this is kind of what I say. I say in the last week, we've paid over $200,000 in overpaying for um, people's uh, vehicles in this last week. My general manager, Dave's getting so crazy, we're about to put him in a straight jacket. And everybody, everybody say laugh. laugh. Okay, ready? Yeah, so listen, we've already paid over $200,000 in this last week overpaying for people's cars. My general manager, Dave, literally he's getting so crazy on overpaying for people's cars, we're about to put him in a straight jacket. It's just a little bit crazy. That's how much he's giving. I kind of give a little giggly laugh, and then I say, so, all I need you to do is come down to the store. It's gonna take about two minutes. We're gonna blow your mind, and in the end, it's your decision what you wanna do. Sell it, walk away with the big check, or drive home laughing, it doesn't matter. When can you make it in? Right now or would after work be best? Now listen to me. Somebody tell me no. Say no. no. If somebody says no, you're not going to stop. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do one spin off. What does that mean? I'm gonna say, hey, no problem. I appreciate you taking the call. Hypothetically, let's say you had a house and it was worth $100,000, but someone was gonna give you 500,000 for it, right? You'd give them two minutes of your time, right? Just two minutes? They say, well, I'd, yeah, I'd do two minutes. I say, that's all we need. So all I need you to do is come down, we're gonna give you a crazy offer and blow your mind, and in the end, it's your decision. You don't have to make a commitment to do anything. By the way, when can you make it down? Right now, or would after work be best? Or maybe tomorrow morning. You let me know, I'm gonna send a picture of you, so you put a name with the face, send you our store address, and I'll see you when you get here, I can't wait to meet you. Does everybody get it? Okay, now watch this. Everybody ready? Every salesperson standing right there. They're all waiting on the next up. You know where I'm at? Right here. Hitting dials, setting appointments, all day long. Now watch, people are gonna say, well, what are you gonna do when they get there? What do you mean, what am I gonna do when I get there? Everybody say, everybody listen. When they're on their way in, what do you think they're thinking about? Man, if they give me a lot of money, what would I buy? What would I? What would I trade it in for? What would I do? Do you think they're thinking about that, yes or no? Yes. Do you think anybody would come in if they wouldn't entertain doing something if it was enough? Absolutely not. Come on, man. Hey, by the way, are these people educated? They've done all their homework? Or are these people just got a phone call and they're on their way? Bruce. Man, you wanna make some big money? Now's the time. Now listen, when you come in and you meet me, I say, hey, so nice to meet you. I'm gonna go get some information off your car. I'll be right back, okay? Cool, let me get your keys. Also, you're amazing, I'm Andy. Maybe I met you before, maybe I haven't. I'll be right back. Go outside, get the information off the car. Then when you come back, I'm gonna say this, you ready? Everybody say hypothetically. I say, hey, hypothetically, I'm gonna ask you one question. Let's say my general manager comes back and makes you a crazy offer. Everybody say that. Fix you a crazy offer and everybody say and you're like Yes, no say and you're like, and you're like. Okay, so I'm gonna pay him. I'm gonna paint a picture watch this So listen my general manager is about to go dr uh, drive your vehicle and check it out And let's say he came back made you a crazy offer and then and then you were like, you know what? Get your checkbook out cuz I'm selling it. Let's say you said that to me, right? What would you drive home in? Would it be something newer, bigger, smaller, lower miles, better gas mileage, more warranty? What would it be? Probably the new tracks. Bam! It's on. Everybody say this, hypothetically. Yeah. All, right, all right, repeat after me, you ready? Listen, I'm training you guys, right? You wanna know how to do this? Well, I have a question for you. Yes. So, when we, I mean, in your sales training, when you did actual phone calls, and did you throw out an arbitrary number, like 200 grand? because I just get wary with- Oh, people. don't throw any number. Okay, because I don't yeah. think that, that my, oh. they pay 200 grand because then I feel like we're tied that we spent 200 grand in a week nope. on overpaying- So, so remember what I said, you guys can say whatever you want, watch this. Hey, my general manager all week has been overpaying for people's trade-ins. He's getting so crazy, we're about to put him in a straight jacket. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, remember this. You guys, when you hear stuff that I say, like we'll remove the number, we're good. I'm telling you, it's, it's painting a picture that he's throwing out money that people have never thrown out before. He's getting so crazy, we're about to put him in the straitjacket. Ha, ha, ha. Right. When can you make it down? Right now or would after work be best? 
Am I controlling the situation? Am I controlling the move? Am I pushing you in the direction I want you to go? You see that? Okay, now watch this. Whenever I come, okay, when I meet you at the dealership, right? What's your name? Devin. Devin, nice to meet you, sir. Andy Elliott. Just putting a name with the face. It was awesome talking to you on the phone. Come on inside, man. What do we do? Have him have a seat. What do I do? Do I go get my manager? No, man, you don't need your managers. You need to learn how to sell. Okay, and then you sit down with them and you say, hey, I'm gonna get some information off your vehicle so my manager can go and check it out, okay? By the way, how long have you had it? When did you buy it? Who's the one driving it? Is there anything wrong with it that we need to know about? You know what I'm saying? What are two things you like about it? You know what I'm saying? I just ask them, why did you buy it back then? I'm just getting some information. Then what do I do? I literally say, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get the exact miles and then I'll be right back with you. Do I go hang out with my buddies, go over there and drink some coffee? No, go straight out. They gotta see you go straight out because you can't waste their time. Yes? They like us to take the customer outside with us. Oh, but, but that's totally cool. You do that same thing. Okay, that's cool. So take them with you, leave them there. It doesn't really matter to me. But my goal is I wanna explain to you. When you go out and you get the information off the vehicle, see these eyes God gave you? Use your eyes. I watch salespeople, they go fill out a trade appraisal. They don't even look at the car. They walk outside, they look at the tag, they look at the VIN, the miles, the color, and they go in. I'm like, hey, bro, did, did you look at the car? Was the dash lit up like a Christmas tree? Did you look at the tires? Was there any dents, things, scratches on it? Do you think that they still treat it like it's a new car, like they did the day that they bought it? Or do you think it's getting to be like a used car and they're not taking care of it? Does, when is the last time it looked like they washed it? Is this important when you're trading people out of their cars? Yes. You think salespeople even pay attention to this no more? They're supposed to, they don't. You know they don't. They don't pay attention anymore. You know why? Time kills deals, we all know this, but you're speeding up through the wrong processes. You're speeding up during the wrong parts. You're supposed to run to the trade and then walk around it slowly and then run back in the building. Not walk slow out to the building and drag your feet all poopy pants and then walk around the car fast and then drag your butt back in slow. You check the car, now watch, here's my goal. Once I get the information on the car, I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna say this. Man, is it David, is that right? David, man, awesome, love your vehicle, my manager's gonna love it. Hypothetically, let me ask you a question. Let's say my general manager, remember Robbie I told you about on the yes. phone? He comes out here, he makes you a crazy offer and you're like, you know what? Get your checkbook out, because I'm selling it. Let's say you said that to me, right? Okay. What would you drive home in? Would it be something newer, bigger, smaller, lower miles, better gas mileage, more warranty? What would it be? I'd like something a little bit bigger. You got a magic rabbit foot in your pocket? It's your lucky day, David. Come here, man, I got something for you. Let's go over here. I got something bigger for you. Hey, is this selling? Did I just call him, get him out of his home, go look at his trade, I didn't give him a number, and now I'm on the way outside on the lot. How? See this mouthpiece? See these hands? See my intentions? Are my intentions good or bad? Good. They're good. Everybody understand this. People say, I don't like salespeople. I don't like salespeople either with bad intentions. I, li I don't like salespeople with commission breath. You know what that means? Yeah, yes. I think sometimes too we set up the wrong intent because we just want to get someone in the door. So we set the appointment for the yep. trade and then what we try to do before we do the appraisal is we're like, oh, our manager's going to get mad at us. We need to find another car before we're going to give them another on their trade. But this brings them in on a promise that we make good on, we earn their trust, and then we sell them another car. That's it. And by the way, I ask a simple question. If you want to know how closers work, ask great questions, get great answers, right? What did I say? I said, I said hypothetically, Let's say my general manager, everybody, you can hypothetical anything. I got to talk to my wife. Hypothetically, let's say you already called her and she said, let's do it. Will we wrap it up? Yeah. Okay. Well, then it is a real wife objection. Let's put it to bed and handle it. You know what I'm saying? You got, can you hypothetical anything? Yes. Hypothetically. Guys, and by the way, I, I'll give you all these word tracks, but they're tattooed on my heart. You see this? Listen, everything that I say, if you're like, I want to learn what you just said, here's how you have to learn it. You can't, you can't take the elevator. You have to take the stairs. Here's the stairs. You got to write it down. Once you write it down, you got to write it down another seven or eight times. When you write something down seven to 10 times, your brain starts to jump ahead. Some of you in here say, I'm not good at learning. You're like, man, but I'm not good at learning word tracks. No, bro. You're underestimating the amount of effort it takes to learn a word track. You're underestimating. If you want to earn a million dollars a year, 
Everybody wants a million if it was easy. It's not easy. You know what you gotta do? Number three, you gotta train. This, this, this right here, this word, everybody hates it. You hate it, you hate it, you hate it, you hate it. Everybody hates the word. We're training, oh man, we gotta do training again. Dude, self-development is the greatest thing you'll ever have in your life. If all of you could spend one week with me and I could teach you everything that I knew, all my sales word tracks, all the way, the way I speak, the way I talk, the way I articulate my words, the way I wordplay, the way I'll pattern interrupt, if I could just teach you and you would see how much more money it would make you, you would fall in love with learning. You'd be like, oh my God, dude. Like my most favorite thing in life now is freaking learning. You know why? Because every time I learn something, I become dangerous. Now I'm gonna tell you this. A lot of people have had a lot of shitty, outdated training. Is this good training? Yes, absolutely. You know why? Because I'm you. Like I'm you, dude. Like I remember what it was like. And hey, if I went to the gym every day and I didn't get results, I'd probably not go back. Like I'd probably be like, dude, screw this. I'm going to the gym every day. I'm not seeing any benefits. I'm gonna quit. That's what happens with training. You get these old, outdated training deals. And by the way, listen to me. You guys have to understand, the greatest advice I could ever give you, me as a loser that turned into a kick-ass winner, was I, I out-trained everybody, okay? You wanna win? You're gonna, you're gonna have to L, out self-educate everybody around you. Now I need you to understand something. Most people train just enough, David, just enough, to make just a little bit more money. If everybody in here can master what I'm teaching them today, you'll go home and you'll at least make 20 to 30% more, minimum. Could you make two or three times more or more? Yes. You must become obsessed with self-development. You must be convinced, hey, you must make it your idea. Okay, by the way, everything that I'm doing with you guys right now, it's being a master communicator. You know what sales is? You know what closing is? It's being a master communicator. What does a master communicator do? Make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and I make it the client's idea every single time. I make it your idea to do this. It was my idea, but I made it your idea. See, if I tell you to make more money, you're gonna be like, this guy's not telling me what to do. But when you finally say, man, I wanna make more money, now we got somewhere to go. Every day, everybody say raise your standards. Raise your standards. Somebody told you that if you sold a car a day, that was a good job. You lowered your standards and now you're walking away thinking if I sold one car a day, that'd be a good job. Don't do that. Could you deliver three a day? <laughs> you guys know where you live? How many people live in your area? Three a day is a joke. This is a new standard you must hold for yourself. By the way, listen to me. Some of us, we get a rich, badass life. Some of us, we stay the same. The reason why is you'll never out earn your standard. Whatever standard you set for you is what you get. If she goes, we're selling a thousand a month now. If everybody's like, well, we can't, hey, stop. We're selling a thousand. Thousand's the number. And you're gonna do two a day, you're gonna do two a day, and you're gonna do two a day. And by the way, I'm not gonna force you to wanna do two. I want you to wanna do two, and that's how I know you're right for me and my team. But I need everybody to understand this. Even the best leaders cannot get you to do your job. You have to want to do your job. Who, who, who needs a babysitter? I, I, I walk into car dealerships every day, swear to God. Every day I walk into a car dealership and everybody's sitting on their ass or, or standing at the gate smoking. And I'm like, who's in charge? Who's in charge? And they're like, oh man, I, I get the, these guys, they, they just won't get on the phones. <laughs> they won't get on the phones. They, they won't get on the phones. They don't want to make more money. This is stupid. This is who you guys are competing with. Do you guys understand this? If you guys will listen to me today as we're training, am I intense? Do I have passion? Absolutely. Guys, I've never seen anybody do anything big in life without a lot of energy. I've never seen anybody make a marriage great without having fun, laughing, and bringing a lot of energy. I've never seen a parent be a good parent to their kid without having a lot of energy, fun, and laughing. Whatever you put into something is whatever you get out of it. Guys, this is our life. You guys, this is your adult sport. You get it? This is your sport, man. You're, you're not a kid now. You're not in school. I tell my son, I say, son, once you graduate, your new sport is, in life is business. That's your new sport. 
So enjoy it being a kid now because as an adult, as soon as you hit this, this game here, see, because I look at you guys and if I was selling, I'd be like, dude, I'm going to annihilate these guys. You know, I'm going to do it. Number one, I'm going to out energy them. I'm going to out love them. I'm going to out care you. Okay. Anybody that meets me, they're never going to forget me. I'm going to make sure they don't. I'm going to make sure that when they run into me, no matter what they thought they were going to do, that's gone. And then they're going to want to do what I want them to do. That's called paint pictures, telling stories, influence, and persuasion. Self-invest. Self-invest. What does that mean? The more you learn, the more you earn. Listen, you think customers are sick of car dealers overcharging them for the last two years? Yes or no? Yes. So since they hate car salesmen, right? We don't want to be one. We want to be business people. We want to be people that are so full of love, so energetic and so passionate about serving people and helping people that when they meet us, they forget about everything they've ever thought about anybody inside of a car dealership. What do we need to be good at? You see these hands? You need to be good at using these hands. Use them all the time. Paint pictures, tell stories. These are like sign language. This is, this is what you use. Your feet. Your feet move. When your feet move, then, then it moves clients. Okay? When, your mouth. Don't speak with your mouth, speak with your heart. Do you love people? Okay, good. Love, don't lie. Tell them the truth and tell it from your heart. They can tell when you care. Okay? When you let somebody know that you're here to serve them at the highest level and give them and their family the best customer service they've ever imagined, mean it. Look like you mean it. Believe it. Let your eyes say, yes. You, you matter. You do care. You're important. You're significant. Remember what I said? People won't always remember what you said, but they'll always remember the way you made them feel. Everybody understand this. There's something I believe in. It's called total recreation. And reinvent yourself. Okay? I grab you, and I'm like, dude, I'm going to reinvent you. I'm totally going to reinvent the way you talk, the way you speak, the way you believe, the way you act, your behaviors. Now listen, in order to reinvent some of you guys, we got to audit some shit in your life. Am I right? Okay, like look, if I was to talk to him, and I'm just giving you an example, he's like, I'm around bad people, but I love where I live. I just, I don't have very good friends. You know what I tell him to do? Hey, sell your house and move 30 minutes away. Moving him 30 minutes away and getting him away from these people, now. Those people in your phone, block them. We're done. Okay. Now what we got to do is we got to understand this. When people don't align with the new you, you're going to say, hey, man, you know, you're, you're, you're cracking up, you know, but I, there's two people that are here and I ain't laughing. So like either you're going to change or I'm going to remove you out of my life. Does that make sense? This is what I decided to do when my life changed. Okay. I'm telling you, I moved 30 minutes away. Why? I needed, and I'm not asking you to go move. I'm trying to tell you what I did. I needed to reinvent myself, so I moved out of my neighborhood. I, I didn't see any landmarks anymore, shit that was normal to me. The gas station was different. The road into work was different. Things were different for me. I needed things to change, right? Because if you don't change, things don't change. Sometimes you got to change a couple things. You guys have the best job. You guys have the best job. You guys have the best career. You guys are in the best company. You guys have the best of everything. But what I've seen in this company is this company is comfortable. Okay, and you may say, well, we're doing better. I know, but shit, man, you guys can be five times better than you are. So I just want to tell you the reason why we train, the reason why we learn is because level 10 earning opportunity. Now, but I want to cover this last thing. I want you to think about this on the way. I asked you, what is the top 1%? Everybody said 400 to 1 mil. My question is, what are you earning now? What? What is it? So I want to give you an example. If somebody in here is earning 100K, a year, and, and I would tell you, I believe it's a mill. I believe what she said was correct. I have people that I train that make a mill to a million and a half a year that sell cars, that I train. And I see their checks, and they train every day, and they're obsessed with it. They know everything I know, they're, they operate just the same way I operate. They love the game. They, 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 they own the game. And that's what I want you guys to do, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna leave here with, with a, a different way of doing everything. So as I'm teaching you guys this today, people say, well, it costs too much to train. It costs me too much time. Dumbass. Do you know what it costs you not to train? If you understood that when you're sitting there, hanging out with your buddies, doing this, doing that, getting distracted, getting on your phone, guys that are making a million a year, they're selling something, looking for something to sell, or training to get better. There's no number four. Yeah, but what about, there is no what about. 
They make $300 a day or they sell three cars. One of the two is happening. But they're damn sure not going to go home with two cars and 248 calls made. It'll be two cars sold, 300 dials. You say, well, what if you don't make the 300 by 8 o'clock? You tighten up your schedule. You realize that at some point during that day, you made a mistake. And you wasted some time. And you gave some effort to something that had no value in your life. Don't do it again tomorrow. But write this down. The person that can self-correct. I want you to write this down too, David. The person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. The person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. If any of you in this room are finding a hole, a blind spot in your game, which I know you guys are, the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. You want to be wealthy? Want to make more money than you know what to do with? You got to be able to self-correct. I can't change you. David can't change you. She can't change you. You have to change you. By the way, Two rules to business, which I talked about last time. I said, rule number one, don't ever let anybody else know your business better than you. We're in here to train today so we can learn our business better and be the best. Rule number two, try to figure out how to kick your own ass every day. Your job in this room isn't to say, oh man, but, but I am pretty good, ain't I, Andy? No, dude, listen to me. You're not very good and it's okay because we're going to fix it today and we're gonna fix your hole. And you say, but you told me to believe in myself. I'm not asking you to not believe. I want you to realize that you're not as good as you need to be to make the kind of money that you wanna earn. And the reason why you've been running around disappointed, not earning what you wanna earn, isn't because you didn't believe, it's because you didn't have the skill. You don't have a money problem, you got a skill problem. You fix the skill, fixes the money. Does that make sense? Everybody get it? Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.